Hey, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, if you are watching, shout out to the boys and girls, young men and young women that's watching. Um, some of you could be in junior high. Some of you are in high school and you're watching, you're getting the knowledge and you're getting the education. And that's great. That's awesome. I appreciate that. I saw before we got started here, they said that the white supremacists are already disliking um, the stream just because we haven't even said a word yet. And every time the white supremacists do that, make sure you click like, and also shoot, make them even more upset, throw a donation in. They hate when you do that. Trust me, they can't stand when you do that. So um, don't let them do that. Like, hopefully we got enough people here. Okay, Glam Bell's here. Anybody say anything stupid, block them. You know, that's, that's my motto. Um, we're not here to argue with terrorists or discuss anything or prove anything to them. Uh, they need to be out of here. If you're trolling, they're going to get you out of here. Just kind of how it works. I don't really fuss too much about when people are getting kicked out. We're trying to have a discussion here. So tonight, you know, like I said, I said, I'm do this stream tonight. Like I said, because I know during the week, I usually don't have a whole lot of time uh, to do streams. So we have, you know, news stories to cover. We still got interviews we have to upload. So it's a lot of things. I hope you're having a great Sunday night. Uh, most of you, um, it is hot as hell down here in texas it's supposed to be in central texas between 107 and 109. um i know around here it's supposed to be you know around 101 but the real feel will be like 115 degrees now i feel bad for anybody and i'm just being honest i feel bad for anybody that don't have melanin because them chemicals they give you talking about sunscreen that's not gonna help you in this heat I thank God I have melanin. You couldn't get me. That's why I saw that story and I talk about that. These women in Ghana taking pills to try to make their children lighter skin. That is the dumbest thing ever to do. Why would you want to get rid of something as great as melanin? Why? Everybody in the world trying to copy melanin, want to have darker skin and you sitting up there trying to get rid of it. We have to, I'm going to get to that. We got to talk about that self hate. That's in our, in the black community. I'm talking about in the darker skinned black people. We have a lot of darker skinned black people who don't like dark skin. Trust me, they don't. And that's a whole nother story. And people get all in their feelings about it, but forget your feelings. I'm talking about fixing a problem. It's not about feelings. So I saw something and I posted this on my social media pages. And I say, well, look at here, the democratic party. Now it made me say, I got to do a stream on this. I have to talk to the family about this because they're trying to worm their way back to black folks. And I stated this to myself. I said, as you know, we grow and as we have a platform, um, we're going to speak to the people. Our votes should not ever, 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 ever be taken for granted. Okay. And that same democratic party has done nothing for us. And I'm going to show you, they really still on doing nothing for us. I'm, I'm going to prove something to you what they're doing through this candidate that they all behind a black woman by the name of Stacey Abrams. Okay. And I, and I'm going to show you her platform, but I tell people Barack Obama, he showed all of us don't vote for a person just because they are black. You need to know what they stand on and are they doing anything specific for the black community? If they're not doing anything specific for the black community, why are you voting for them? Why are you helping everybody else get a leg up over you as black people? We are sick and tired of fighting for everybody. And then everybody step over our dead bodies, our bleeding bodies, our bodies that's in jail. Um, and, and everybody step over and get ahead of us, look down on us at the same time while you stepping over us because we fought so hard. And no, no, we as black people, we, we're not doing that no more. We're not doing it. So like I said about Maxine Waters the other day, was she all that rah rah about illegal immigration, but who showed up at her spot to try, try to protect her from the Oath Keepers? It wasn't illegal immigration. It was black folks, the people she should be defending. Just like when they was talking about that little female from um, New York, what is that, the Alexandria, whatever her name, Oscar, I can't remember that chick's last name. You know, the Puerto Rican lady that upstaged uh, this long time uh, Congress guy, whatever, uh, in New York, 
And I would listen to her platform. Basically, she was kind of mimicking Bernie Sanders' words, but she was talking about her community, but she didn't say nothing about the black community. And this is what I keep saying when they say, oh, we need to be in this together. There ain't no together nothing because when it's time to show me togetherness, I don't see it. I don't. Trust me, I have no problem working with anybody that's helping me. I help you back. I'm a firm believer of that. But I'm, I refuse to sit up here and tell my community to do something and we're not getting it back in return. No, we're not going to be used like that no more. Forget that. Now, let's get to this Democratic Party here. And let me go to this particular screen. All right. So this is out of the Atlantic. And you can pull it up yourself and you can look at it. A big headline, a Democratic Party apologizes to black voters. The DNC's bid to energize African-American turnout this fall began with these words from Chairman Tom Perez in Atlanta. I am sorry. Now let's talk about that. Now, when they had an election, who's going to run the Democratic Party? It got down to the Tom Perez guy and his brother, um, and the media attacked the black man because, oh, he was at the Million Man March like he committed a crime because he, he was in the nation. He was passing out final calls. And, oh, that was just so horrible. He needs to denounce Louis Farrakhan. He needs to do this. He needs to do that. See, the media don't want nobody black running the Demo any kind of political party. They don't. Just like when that Michael Steele was running the Republican Party right after Obama got in, it didn't last long either. They don't want black folks running nothing. They want you to be worker ants. That's it. Or if they allow you to come up, you got to play the tune of what they're doing. Please understand that, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as we go down here, this is the sister that, that's going to be running for governor right here. Her name is Stacey Adams. Oh, Abrams, I'm sorry. <laughs> the shoes. Abrams. is that she's vying to be the first African-American woman governor in U.S. history. Now, she graduated from Spelman University. She's a lawyer. Um, she's also an author. Um, she has served in the uh, Georgia House. So she's been definitely in the politics. So she's running. Uh, so they tell you about the fundraise. The swanky fundraiser don't often begin with apologies to the Will Hill donors who shelled out thousands of dollars to sip wine, eat steak, and listen to pep rally speeches. But as he looked out over a predominantly black crowd gathered in the Georgia Aquarium, on Thursday night, Tom Perez, a Democratic National Committee chairman, felt compelled uh, to issue, and he's talking about the mea culpa. I guess that's another word to say he, he's sorry or what I don't know. Like I said, these little fancy words, don't care. He says, I am sorry, Perez said. At first, it seems like Perez is voicing one more generalized regret for the 2016 election and put Donald Trump in the White House. The squandered opportunity to abruptly end the Democrats' hold on the presidency and immediately put at risk its policy gains of the previous eight years. Perez, however, soon made clear that his apology was much more specific. He said, we lost elections now in November 2016. We lost elections in the run-up because we stopped organizing. He said, we stopped talking to people. He said, we took too many people for granted. Perez said, and African Americans are our most loyal constituency. We all took, I'm sorry, we all frequently took for granted. That is a shame on us folks. And for that, I apologize. And for that, I say it would never happen again. Of course, the silly black people that was there that broke out in applause. Um, of course, uh, before he can finish his apology, heads are nodding in acknowledgement and appreciation. Um, you know, they, they, they going on talking about uh, all the different, the little history, but this, this most so we wanted to focus on this right here, okay? Now, let, let me let me talk just a little bit to Mr. Tom Perez. Tom Perez, okay. Sir, that apology that you gave isn't worth any brand of toilet paper that I would use to wipe my butt with. You giving empty words to black people and you're not doing anything for black people. You're advising this candidate, this sister, and, and I don't know this sister from at all. I, she could be the best person in the world. I'm not disparaging her or nothing. That's not what I'm doing, but she's following her cues from the democratic party. And we're going to show 
why that apology don't mean crap because if it meant something I'm approved here in a minute, why the guys are straight lying to y'all all over again. So for the past 50, and let me, let me start, start before I even go into this spill. These white supremacists that say, yeah, you see, you see, we don't like you. We not joining with you. Go on by your business. Go make America great again with Trump. Please do. Okay. Now past 50 years, we have, we are the only race in America that vote in a block. No other race of people vote like that. None. Our vote is the most powerful vote in this country. So much so that's why the racist white supremacists in the Republican party and also those in the democratic side as well, that don't stand against it, always try to gut voting rights and always trying to gerrymander districts. Okay. Anything you can do to keep black people from voting. That's what you're trying to do because black people's vote is the ultimate swing vote. Black people's vote win or lose elections. Yes. That so-called, and it's a lie, the so-called 13%, how are you going to be 13% of the population since the sixties? That's so stupid. But anyway, that's so-called you try to lie and say like our population don't grow. Your population isn't growing. You're dying off more than you're being born. So we're not doing that. Anyway, um, we've been voting like that for a long time. And what have we gotten out of it? Now we talking about Democrat run cities. We're not talking about Republican run cities because we are not voting for them. We talking about you and Democrat run cities. Let's talk off with Chicago. One of them. Okay. Rahm Emanuel, the mayor closed over 50 schools in black areas, putting children to go across gang areas when they had schools in their area. Okay. I don't see Democrats closing a bunch of schools in the white communities, but I thought you were supposed to be our friends. I thought you understood our problems. I thought you guys, you know, stood with us, right? No, because you're still closing schools and these Democrat ran cities. Um, you still have police brutality in these cities. Think about it. New York, that's Democrat ran, right? Eric Garner. What happened with that? That's not a Republican state. That's not a red state. And yet that Daniel Pantaleo still haven't got charged or anything. We watched Eric Garner get choked out. So what's going on with that? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying we still getting abused. We still being discriminated against in democratic red cities. We still having crime issues, even though you're occupying our neighborhoods because you allow the crime to happen in Democrat ran cities. You sit there and give immigrants a preference over black folks and they haven't gave you no loyalty. They haven't voted for you in a block. They never have, but black folks have. And you sit up there and make illegal immigration your platform over the people that has been faithful to you for over 50 years. You sit up there and done and, and, and been okay with people coming into this country. They go to the black neighborhoods, they get all the loans and grants and y'all help them do it. And then they set up businesses in the black areas because white folks not about to have them in theirs, but they come to the black areas and set up their businesses and shops and they stepping over the blood, the sweat, the tears of black people, the voting of black people, you know, black people lost their life trying to vote. Black people's churches were firebomb, black people lynched trying to vote. And then all the things that we fought for other groups would come in and y'all support these other groups coming in over us as black people. And then we supposed to go out and vote for you for what, what are we getting out of it? Tell me that. What is that apology going to do for black people in our situation? Our unemployment is still the highest in this nation. I don't care what Trump says. Our unemployment is double the white unemployment. Why is that? I thought we had some friends, right? I thought that our white liberal friends knew about the racism in this country and see that. Wait a minute. Black unemployment is higher than white unemployment. Maybe it's some discrimination in work practices, but you're not doing anything about that. Matter of fact, it was your party that brought in that three strikes law, Bill Clinton. He brought that in and it hurled so many black men in the prison. That's a Democrat policy. When it, these people get out of jail, 
they can't stay nowhere if they have a felony. Bill Clinton brought that in too. All these men that's getting locked up for child support and all the other things that they're getting locked up for. Listen, it's ways to get money out of people outside of locking somebody up. What you gonna do? You can't get the money that way. Taking driver license away. All this, all that stuff will revert back to Bill Clinton. A Democrat. We have suffered the most out of all the democratic policies. Then you are a disrespectful group of people. You sit up there and try to call black people. Oh, you know, you guys, y'all people of color, black folks. Do you know how d disrespectful that is for them to call you people of color? Think about that for a minute. I'm gonna go two ways with this. The first step, they just might as well go ahead and call you colored white and colored. That's just a, a two in the 18 version to call you colored. At least back in that time period when they said colored, it meant you. At least it meant you. Now this so-called people of color, it doesn't even mean you. It means everybody that's non-white. And then when they do these policies, it's called people of color policies. You don't get nothing out of it. Everybody else gets something out of the deal except you as black people. But you will go out and organize. You will stand in long lines. You deal with these white supremacist terrorists that's in the, in the police department to John, to John public. You would deal with all of them to vote because you dealing with, they voter ID laws, they voter suppression and gerrymandering. You dealing with all that. And, and, and this, this party has not shown a lick of loyalty to you. Black people went, in, it, it was in Alabama with that Doug Jones situation. Show me what Doug Jones has done for black people because the only reason he won against Roy Moore is because of black people. And it was proven and, and the media had to admit that. What has Doug Jones done for black people to say, Hey man, they put me in the office. I, I got to help them out in Alabama. I don't hear black folks coming back and say, man, Doug Jones, he the truth, man. He been doing this and doing that for us. Hell, we haven't heard anything about that. Have we about Doug Jones? They use black people and then they go on to, to Congress and then they do what they want to do up there and help their buddies. They get, um, uh, uh, the lobbyists with these companies give them millions upon millions of dollars to vote certain ways. That's why you have a politician whose salary could be what? 150, 160 uh, a year, some of them. And yet they have millions of dollars. Why they have millions of dollars is because they getting all this back in money. That's not given by the taxpayer. They don't live in the districts as well. So black people aren't benefiting from any of it. So what good is your apology? Tom Perez. The things you promote, let's think about it right now. You're promoting LGBTQ. That doesn't benefit the black community and black people who are LGBTQ. They're black first. They're not like a, a white person that's gay and a black person that's gay is two different things. The white person still got white privilege. The black person do not. But yet you make sure that group has something on top of that. You make sure your platform, um, pushes immigration. How is that benefiting black Americans? It doesn't benefit us at all at I'm talking about us, not them, us. We have a right to say we should benefit from a party that we voted for, for the past 50 years. And for us saying we demand something isn't saying we hate people because you know, people play that little dumb game, that deception. No, we have put in the work. We have put in the pain, suffering, and we have lost lives over what we have fought for in this country. So why in the world should we sit back and be quiet and let more people step over us when we've been in this country from day one toiling for everything that we have? Hell no. You're pushing abortion still. That's your platform. How is that benefiting the black community? When everybody knows that was started to eliminate black people. That's one of the most biggest anti-black policies you have. That's a mass genocide against black people. Pookie and Ray Ray ain't killing that much on the block, but you're pushing it. You're pushing the feminism. How is that beneficial to the black family, which we need our family to make it. 
you're pushing programs for low income, but you're not pushing programs for these people to get business loans and business grants. You're not pushing training for them to get so they can move on into higher education, possibly, or skilled trades. You're not doing any of that. So how's all what you pushing beneficial to the black community? How? What good is your apology? I don't get it. We still getting murdered by the cops. We still getting shot in the back. You know about the stand your ground law that happens to Trayvon. Where, where were y'all at fighting against the stand your ground law? Where were y'all at? Y'all not there now. And you want the votes of black people? For what? Oh, I know because the Republicans are racist and Donald Trump is racist and that don't mean nothing gone into days that you could scare us to vote because of another white man racist, please. Y'all racist too. Actually, you more of a racist than they are. At least they telling me what they are. You act like that. Oh yeah. I like you guys, but we are in a worse position dealing with you as black people. Every time, every time we get a politician, a black politician that's, that's, that's coming through the democratic party, it's just like what happens in them African nations with, with, with the French. They, they all looking good. They, they driving good, but the people is suffering. Look at Baltimore, all of the, the black democratic politicians. Oh, they look like a million bucks, but the people in Baltimore are suffering. Detroit. All the politicians, black ones leading Democrat, the people suffering. Just like they said in that memorandum 46, raising some of these educated blacks up, but to go along with the system, but not benefit blacks. Exactly what that memorandum 46 says. And y'all are the biggest ones that, that help with that. You're not for the improvement of black people. You're not for the liberation of black people at all. So why should we come out and vote for you? Waste our gas, waste our time for what? No, no, no. You got to give us something just like y'all do to white people. White people get something every election. Cause white people are not going to put up with not getting anything. They going to cry. Holy hell. If you don't give them something. What was the theme of the last election? Oh, the forgotten uh, uh, white worker. That was the theme. Have the Democrats ever said the forgotten black worker? The forgotten black mothers? They even tried to say, oh, the mothers of the movement. Mothers of the movement, but you're not trying to change any laws to get these cops locked up. What do you mean a mother of the movement? You pandering to the pain of black people so you can use them. Evil. But you want to come up and say to black people, well, you know, we forgot about y'all. Sorry. Really? No, 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 no. It, it, it don't work that way. Black people have to value themselves for one and value their votes. And I tell black people never attach yourself to no political party, attach yourself to what are you going to do for black people? I don't want to hear that people of color disrespecting me using that term. I want to hear what you're going to do for black people, African Americans, whatever you want to call us. What are you going to do? What are you going to do to fix our unemployment that's double the, the amount of white when we know it's because of discrimination? What are, you, what are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about this marijuana legalization? Why we need marijuana legalized because they use marijuana to lock up a lot of black people and every state that marijuana has been legalized. The incarceration rate has been dropping because most of the time brothers are locked up. They're not locked up for violent crimes. Most people in jail now are locked up for nonviolent offenses. I don't hear the democratic party talking about the sentencing guidelines or why black men get more time 
in jail than their white counterparts, but it's supposed to be our friends though. The same Democrats support these police. They're not trying to break up the police unions that run like gangsters in this country, but they're supposed to be our friends though. We are supposed to go out and vote for them and oh, okay. You're going to, you're going to bring out a, a, a black person in front of us. Hey, black people vote for them. You see they're black like you vote for them. No, 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 no. That's not going to work. We don't care. If you bring out Steven from, from the house and say, I'm, I'm black. Like you vote for, vote for me, but you following everything, uh, 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 massa Calvin telling you to do. No, 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 no. That that's, that's just not going to work. That's not going to work at all. We are a generation of black people. That's not only more aware of, you know, our history and, and more aware of, you know, where we come from more aware about what's happening in definitely the diaspora, but we're also aware of what's happening in the country that we live in as well. And we are not letting off of the democratic party. We're not getting off of your necks. You're still disrespectful. You don't even come talk to the people who are actually making the conversation. Now you still run into the mainstream media, which if you look at the numbers, nobody watches that only elderly people for the most part in this country, watch the mainstream media news. If you were smart, you would actually reach out to people um, who are on social media, who are on uh, different platforms that's making different uh, moves, who's talking to people daily. If you were smart, at you know, Donald Trump, he at least did that much. He, a bunch of, he reached out to crazy Alex Jones of all people. At least he did that. But y'all still on CNN and nobody watching that crap It's boring. Who cares about that? They're not going to tell the truth, but let me, let me say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove to you about, about this sister here too. And I'm not against this sister cause she's taking that Tom Perez guy leadership. So let me, let me, uh, uh, um, show you guys something real quick. All right. This is sister Stacy Abrams. Like I say, nothing against this sister at all nothing what I'm about to say, but this has to do with the democratic party pushing the same crap. All right. Issues. All right. Stacy's vision of Georgia. Now, here we go. Now I want you to see the head, the headers, bold and ambitious children. Okay. Well, I, mean, I guess it means to say ambitious. I don't know. Is that a word? Anyway, a fair and diverse economy. Now they say diverse, that includes everybody. They don't single you out. Effective and engaged government, criminal justice reform, child care, K through 12 public education, higher education. There we go. LGBTQ rights. Don't say nothing about civil rights of black people. The energy jobs, which is fine. Economic development, immigrant justice. Don't say nothing about justice that happened to us. We haven't got justice forever. Okay. Economic mobility, military veterans, gun safety, small business, voting rights, health, the arts, affordable housing. Now this is what she's running on. You guys, you guys need to see that this is what she's running on, but I want you to pay attention to that LGBTQ rights, even though it is against the law in the United States of America to discriminate against anybody about age, race, sexual orientation. If you have a disability, etc. We have a plenty of laws on the books for that, but the Democrats make sure to promote LGBTQ and immigrant justice. Now, the only thing that I read through here that I can agree with, with her was on a criminal justice reform. And we scroll down here to the decriminalization of poverty, um, through eliminating money bail, you know, which that's something that should help even people in our community. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Uh, improving uh, pretrial search and supervision, increasing diversion programs, accountability courts like veterans courts, drug courts, etc. providing uh, for civil penalties rather than criminal penalties for certain traffic offenses and marijuana possession. That part of it, 
okay, I'm good with, but in this criminal justice reform, when she's talking about effective community policing, now she don't say nothing about police brutality. This, she, she's pushing the same BS. Now watch through engagement with community members to proactively identify and address issues that impact the quality of life in neighborhoods and to further assist law enforcement in obtaining the resources, including training and data driven solutions they need to protect the communities in which they serve. That's all they say. Oh, they need more training, need more training. No, they don't need more training because they don't go and shoot a bunch of, uh, uh, white kids in the back and beat up a bunch of white kids like that. Not like they do black people. So we mean training. No, they still not addressing our issues and problems, even in the criminal justice, uh, reform. Now she talks about a little bit further. Let me see if I can go back here. She talks about, you know, uh, this one about K through uh, pre K she want universal pre K, which I agree with that. But see what I'm saying is this woman is making sure that she make a whole thing just to address defending the rights of the LGBTQ Georgians. You see that? Why is it that black people don't get a whole section to talk about our issues, our unemployment, our opportunities, the protection of our children. When we have been singled out every freaking day, somebody calling the police on black folks every day was for stupid things. But, but, but the democratic party, they're not trying to address those issues. They're not even addressing that. Immigrant justice right there. I mean, a whole thing that says immigrant justice, but no justice for, for black people, but we supposed to come out and vote. You supposed to get all the black votes in Georgia because you, you're, you're black. And I'm not saying this woman is pushing all this by herself because the reason why I know that, that Tom Perez guy is behind all this too, is because this is their platform. This is what they run on. And if that sister want to win, I would tell her you better get a black agenda. If you don't get it, you're not going to win and you're going to be shocked that you lost. Even in the age of people can't stand Trump. I mean, you have a good chance of winning because people can't stand Trump, but that doesn't guarantee you to win. If you don't have a black agenda. You know, so she, she's talking about, um, you know, uh, the immigrant communities, you strengthen our state and you're vital to his future. Your success lifts us all. And I stand with you. Oh my God. And when I say this, I'm not against the people at all. They haven't done me a thing to be against them. What I'm saying, you got a black woman who's running for governor of Georgia and she's saying they're vital to the future. They success lifts us all. Like I'm not lifted up because of what they do. I'm lifted up when other black people are doing something. Because most of the time they live around me, they, they they probably would hire my kids or whatever the case may be. Like he say, you know, then then this one she says she talk every day about her mission to build Georgia, where everyone has a freedom and opportunity to thrive. And she want to be clear, I do mean everyone who resides in our state. One in ten Georgians migrated here from another country, so she's going through all that. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Now, now look, this is what she says. This is that bothered me. My faith demands that I speak up for the voiceless and the vulnerable that a soul finds rest only by doing the most for the least of these. Uh, many people in our community are voiceless too, sister. Where's your faith on, on the black folk? We're vulnerable every day. Don't, don't you see how vulnerable we are every day? We can't even freaking walk down the street and we're vulnerable to possibly being murdered by the police. That's vulnerable. Who else? I don't see a bunch of immigrants having the police called on them for, um, making hot dogs, selling water, um, cutting grass. I, I don't see that, but black folks, I see all the time getting the police called on them. You just had a black man that had a, has a business and white people call the police on him. I think in San Francisco, I just saw, and they saying he was breaking into his own business and four cops showed up 
asking what he doing in his own business. I don't hear a bunch of immigrants have those stories, whether they, they Arab, whether they, they uh, have Hispanic descent, whatever. I don't hear them saying the police are being called on me. She say her soul rests with those seeking asylum and refuge. What about black people that need asylum and refuge from the, these white supremacists? We don't have a sanctuary city or a sanctuary state we can go to to avoid the white supremacists. We have nothing. We have nothing. They could they can come in and get more than we can from our own people. I'm not saying you can't help nobody else out. No, that's not in my heart. But my thing is dog, man. What's wrong with helping our black people? She said, with new Americans, naturalized citizens, and all those on those long, ardent paths towards citizenship, I know this journey is not easy, but believing in the promise of potential of America, seeing yourself as part of its future is the first step. You know, so well, what I'm saying is, ladies and gentlemen, is this the Democratic Party is still on the BS. That's what I was trying to show you, even with this lady, even though they said their apology. They're still on the BS. They don't care about black people. They're not doing nothing to help black people. And it's just that simple. Why would you waste your vote for them? Now, if one of them come out and say, you know what? I better do something for black people because I actually want the votes and I'm going to put it on my website. Like this lady did. I'm going to put it on my website and I'm going to, I'm going to do something for black people specifically to help them out because they've been faithful to this party. Uh, uh, Mr. Kevin Thompson says she's bought and paid for us. She would never speak for us. Well, so far she ain't speaking at all for us. I, I'm, I'm just saying, man, forget that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sitting up there and, um, supporting anybody like that. Unless she changed her tune. Let me, uh, give some shout outs real quick. Um, for what I see for, I think I, I called them out. Uh, a uh, 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 Stephanie Connor. I appreciate you uh, helping us out with the crowdfunding, John B. Uh, I appreciate that. Bongo Blues, I appreciate that. Darlene Banks and Shanika Thornton, 35 minutes ago. Thank you, sister, for helping us out on that uh, crowdfunding. It's, it's, appreciate that. But yeah, it sounds like she bought and paid for. And, 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 you know, like I said, I'm not trying to disparage the sister. I'm not. I don't know her. She could be the best person ever. And I, like I said, I, I don't want to do that. But what I'm saying is, it's like they pick a certain type. Have you noticed that? They never pick someone that think like maybe me or others who say, man, forget that. Like, like, you know, they, no, no, no. They want to be somebody that saying, look, you will be okay. You will get the prestige. Okay. You will be the first, you know, black female, um, governor. And yet blacks will still be incarcerated. Blacks will still be discriminated against. Matter of fact, it'd be probably be retaliation from the race soldiers in Georgia to start killing black folks. Cause they have a black woman, uh, governor. Cause you remember we got this so-called black president and how the race soldiers was killing us left and right. We didn't get no benefit out of it, but a bunch of death. No, they cannot ever pick. Um, yeah, you say the boule exactly the boule blacks. That's exactly who they pick. I'm saying all that because I know how black folks are. Well, Phil, we, what are we gonna do? Oh, you know, you want to vote? Vote locally. You like your local sheriff, like whoever li the people that live, the black folks that live in Clearwater, Florida. You need to make sure you're registered to vote that area. And when that sheriff comes up for re-election, vote him out. That sheriff got to go. That's what you need to be focusing on your local elections. Who's the prosecutor, you know, your judges, all that, your mayor, your city council, people that affect you more than anybody else. That's the people that you need, uh, to make sure that you're involved with. I'm not a person to say, don't vote at all. No, no, that's stupid. 
you got to be involved politically. But what I'm saying is when it comes to these, um, congressional Senate presidential, all that, no, you gotta have a black platform. You say they scared. I don't care what they scared of. Yeah, well, you're right. I, I agree with you. You said we have to stop uh, being political mammies, carrying everyone else's agenda. You're right. Because every other group come in with their agenda. We got a congressional black caucus where they talk about illegal immigration. Are you serious? But but yet uh, the Latino caucus is fighting for Latino issues, which they should. I'm never against nobody fighting for their people. Why, why would they fight for anybody else outside of their people? Now they, now they fighting for their people, but they want to partner with somebody else. Say, look, you help me. I help you. We team up. That's cool. But black people are the only ones and because you know, it's a lot of with that is self hate. We, we do not want to see, you know, let's call it what it is. Some of us are so ate up of white supremacy in our mind that we hate to see any black person do good. We don't want to see, we don't even want to help other black folks out. We don't. If you if you have been blessed enough, okay, in this country of all places to come up a little bit in life, then you need to reach out and try to help those within your community. Don't be like, man, forget them. I ain't worried with them. I'm good. Because at any moment in this system, you can be right back in that same position. In this system, we all the same. We all are in words in this system whether you the president on down to a homeless person on the street and in between, we all in words and don't ever forget about that's how those people look at us as black folk. You're right. The original democratic party. Yes. They were the party of the Ku Klux Klan. I agree with that. You're right. They don't say anything about Zimmerman or anything else that go on that, that happens against us. They don't say a word, but we supposed to go fight for everybody else and their issues. We're supposed to be folk, go, go fight for feminists. We supposed to go out there and fight for abortion, genocide against our own people. Well, we supposed to go fight for that. We supposed to go fight for LGBTQ and whatever the letters they add into it tomorrow but we don't supposed to fight what's important to us. Why don't the democratic party talk about that 13th amendment? Why don't they say, Hey, let's push to eradicate slavery from the U S constitution period. Period. Not saying it's okay to be enslaved in jail. You get rid of it. Notice your Democrat friends aren't saying that. Why is it that Malcolm X said that the white liberal is the most dangerous one? He, he likened them to the Fox. He said the, the white liberal and the white Republican is the conservative have the same goal in mind, just a different way of doing it. They all believe in white supremacy. All of them. They're not trying to share equal power with two black folks. They worried about you. This is why they're okay with other groups getting ahead of you. And they help other groups get ahead of you. The Democratic Party is on the side, and this this black woman who need her community to help her get in. Okay, she says that the immigrants are vital to the future of America. Not you. You're not vital. They are. I did, I don't hear nobody saying black people are vital to the future of America. I just don't want my people to fall for the okie doke. That's all I'm doing this train for. I don't want you to fall for it. I don't. 
because I see what they doing. Y'all have to stop falling for the same thing. Y'all fall for bait and switch. I'm gonna tell y'all, y'all, what y'all fall for every time. Bait and switch with these white folks. That's how they get you. Bait and switch. You fall for shaming tactics. Um, you fall for fear mongering tactics. Like, oh my God, this person's racist. Oh, you got to vote for us because they're racist. What's gonna happen to you? They, they try to make you think that you about to start being hung from freaking flagpoles because you, this this person is, is voted in. They fear monger you for votes. You got to stop, like say, look, man, you can't fear monger me. You can't shame me. Like they tried to, they tried to even blame you black people for the election. They blamed you many times. They blamed you. Well, you know, black people, if they would have came out and vote uh, like they did for Obama. Uh, Hillary would been a president. Why only black people? There's a bunch of white folks that sat at home too. Why you didn't say nothing about them? Would y'all just talking about black people? Forget them Democrats, man. I'm like, nah, man. They they too disrespectful. They way too disrespectful. Me, I, 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 no, no, no. Yep, you're right. They use scare tactics to get Doug Jones in. Right. That's what I'm saying. Scare tactics. Don't fall for that. He racist deal. Don't fall for a black face. This is what they do: black face, white agenda. Don't fall for that. Black Lives Matter is not nothing we need to be discussing, okay? Black Lives Matter was overtaken by the white liberal to push LGBT against black in black folks' face. Now he says, one person say, well, what are we going to do next? Oh my God. I've been telling you the whole time. Only vote for candidates that have a black agenda. If they don't have it, don't vote for them. Vote locally. Because you can actually get to those people a lot sooner and they affect you more. Like what, like why did, I don't understand the people that want like this mathematical equation to life. It's just simple things. It's very, very simple. You identify the problem. You see the problem, talk about the trickery. Don't fall for it. Do the complete opposite of what you've been doing before. Don't fall for the fear mongering that, that another candidate's a racist. So what Donald Trump's in office or have they stopped you from paying your light bill? You deal with racism every day. This country is built on racism. The foundation is racism. You're not escaping racism. If you live in this country, don't fall for the black face. Remember black face must have a black agenda. People keep telling me that about Dr. Claude Anderson. I've reached out to him several times. He didn't respond to what we, we, we reached out. That's I, I'm not going to keep reaching out to a person if they don't respond. That's just that simple. Now, some of you know, the man, that's a different story. No, they don't want a strong black man. They never want, no, 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 no. They are petrified of a strong black man. He must be demonized. Any black man that talk with any kind of boldness to their voice. Oh no, we can't have him. He, he may even influence the white people. You know, they don't want a black man influencing white people. You know that that was the main issue. Why they went after the Panthers. They wouldn't, they did really didn't care about them in the black community doing what they were doing. They were, they said that, wait a minute, they are influencing white people, young white kids. They were trying to follow them now. Oh no, we got to stop that. So they don't want no strong black man like that. You know, political leadership. What I don't understand, we're talking about Houston. How is it that Sheila Jackson Lee always go back? How is it that Al Green always go back? And then they go back and they'll do crap for black people. Nothing. But they, they want, they talk about immigrants. Then 
you have a congressional black caucus, Trump say, all right, come holler at me. What can we do for black people? They don't even show up. At least show up, present something, and then you could talk about him then and say, man, we presented him something we could do for black people. He ain't do nothing. He didn't even present it. But that's the people that's supposed to be for us. But but I guarantee you, Trump say, what can we do about immigration? I I, I want to talk to you guys about it. They be running up there talking about immigration. But black people, they probably ain't got the attitude. Forget them niggas. That's how they, I, I'm sorry to say it like that. That's how they act toward us. Forget them niggas. They don't think about us. They don't care about us. All the time they show up is when it, when it, when TV, uh, you say Putin coming to the white house, let him come. I don't care. I don't care what he do. You know, my attitude about Trump, go Trump. Trump need eight years in office at this point. Yes, you're right. Some black people do have Willie Lynch. I get it, but I'm not focused on them. Yeah, you're right. They, they, a lot of times they don't want to pick black men. You notice that the Democrats, they don't want to pick black men, strong black men. They don't want that. They didn't even want a black man to lead the democratic party. They have no problem. And it's nothing against the sisters, but I, I see the strategy. It, they rather go with a black woman. They don't want no black man that's going to sp speak truth to power about everything. No, they do not want a black equivalent to Donald Trump. They don't want that. Somebody that will talk just as crazy. Somebody is just as, uh, uh, you know, don't care. They don't want a black man like that. They can have a white man like that, but they, they cannot have a black equivalent to Donald Trump. I'm not telling you to vote for Trump. Like I said, but I just believe that eight years of Donald Trump will wait to be good for America, especially good for black people. This man, this man been in office for not even two years and look at the calamity that's going on in this nation. You see the weather, everything just going, man, it's like, it's like it, everything that Minister Farrakhan said was right. That, that the moment Trump get an election, he win, he going to take America to hell in a rocket ship. It looked like, look like Minister Farrakhan words is coming to pass. Have you seen all the, all the, all the, the, the white people? They're like, Oh my God, we miss Obama. Oh, he was so, he was so respectful. Oh, he was such a great president. Oh, like, like, and I hear nothing but white people missing Obama. I don't hear black people saying that. I know why you miss Obama. Y'all got a lot out of Obama. I would miss him too. If trust me, if he gave us things that he gave y'all, I would miss him. I'd be like, man, I miss president Obama. I see why y'all miss him. He ain't do nothing for us. We got, trust me, we get killed less by the cops since Donald Trump been in office than it was when um, uh, Obama was in office. Then he was so doggone scary. The moment he says that, oh, well, if I had a son like Trayvon and white folks push back on him, it, it was already, you know, it's in him, it's in him. Cause you know, like I say, he, his mother was white. So he want to please white folks It's in him. He can't get away from that. He part white. If we had a black president, we need a black president that come from uh, the senders of slaves in America with two black parents and want to fight for truly fight for the community. And listen, you can fight for everybody, but make sure the community take care of uh, first. That's what white folks do. They make sure white folks are taken care of first. Donald Trump ran on white fear. That's what he ran on white fear. And any candidate Ronald Reagan ran on white fear. Donald Trump ran on white fear because they know, Hey, all you got to tell white people is, Hey, them blacks and them Browns and all the other people going to take over and, and, and the country's not gonna be the same no more. What's going to happen to you? You get what I'm saying? And like, Oh my God, we can have that. So they, they, they just ran to go vote for Trump. He ran on white fear and that he still pandered to white fear. When he went over there to the UK, like I said, that immigration, yeah, all these people coming in, white fear. 
But Donald Trump knows his people. And he panders to them. We don't have candidates that pander to us. So <laughs> no, it, it's it, it's fear. It's fear. Those people are scary. It's scared of your own shadow. That's that's why they want to have about a thousand guns in the house. It's scary. You don't really take much to scale. You can flinch at them, and they they, they want to piss on themselves. And then you look at it, you're talking about the Democrats. California is ran by the Democrats, right? And look at all of the, 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 the evil and ungodliness going on over there. They know they got pedophile rings over there in Hollywood. It's all liberals, but they don't say nothing about that. The music industry, full of the devil. They don't say nothing about that, but it's all so-called our liberal friends. Black people being choked out everywhere, they go. California supposed to be so liberal, but how many times have you noticed all these stories permit Patty and all these other ones has been coming out of California. The black man that was sitting in his car, the white woman coming. to you remember the story I, I posted? He away for his yoga class, California, long beach, all these white supremacists in so-called liberal California. That's why I say they all the same, man. And, until you, until you prove to me otherwise, all of them the same. That's how I'm going to think about it. Just like I told y'all, when you see these white supremacists coming up to you, arguing with you, assume they got a gun, knife, something, because they don't get brave for nothing. Trust me. We as black folk got to stop tearing each other down. We got to start loving each other more and be about the business and be serious. Because we living in perilous times as, as black people, perilous times. The sun has increased its power, which I'm happy about. And I hope the Lord increase it even more. We'll get to see who really can take the sun in. Like I said, I'm not voting for no politician just because just because you're black. That's done. No. No black agenda. No vote for me. Just that simple. And I hope the rest of you will, will, will hear that. Think about it. What I'm saying. I'm gonna point these people out when I see them. I'm not gonna let that Tom Perez guy trick y'all. Or make y'all feel like, like y'all got to vote for somebody because somebody's a freaking racist. You deal with racists every day in your life. Every freaking day you deal with somebody racist. Either undercover or they open with it. You still here. You still living. And that's right. That's the right. Uh, sunscreen free. That's me. Sunscreen free. I can go out in the middle of that sun and just like this, do this and just soak it in for hours. So yes, why, why would you, why would you want to lighten your skin? Them chemicals, they, they say, will give you cancer. No, 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 no. We go, we're going to see who survived with the fittest now when it comes to the power of that sun. If you use sunscreen as a black, if you're a black person, if you're doing that, you seriously, <laughs> oh God, y'all, y'all educate them. I, I don't, I don't have the time. I don't, I don't, I really don't care who hate me. I don't care. That like I said, you guys have to get out of that. This group hate me. That group hate, I don't care who hates me. Somebody going to hate you in life. Other black folks going to hate you too. You got to accept that. Not everybody going to love you. Only thing you have to focus on is the people that, you know, that's as close to you. Um, 
the people in the community that love you, that you get love from. That's who I focus on. I don't focus on the people that hate me. It's a lot of people that hate me. That that's that's not even wasting my that's a waste of my time concerned about people that hate me. Yes, yeah, a lot of y'all say y'all believe in the scriptures. Did didn't didn't Jesus say that uh um you know remember they hated me first? <laughs> so You say, wait, 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 wait. Now I'm laughing. This gotta be troll. You say a black person get a sunburn where I've worked jobs while in the sun, 12 to 15 hours in the sun. I never burned a day. What, what's, what sunburn? I've never experienced a sunburn in my life. You said, you believe everything these colonizers tell you. Oh my Lord. They got us. They got to promote sunscreen. They can't be in the sun 12 to 15 hours like me with nothing on, but, a, but, but light clothing, they ain't got to do that t-shirt, whatever, man, I'm good. This dark skin take in the, the sun reacting with that melanin and that kinetic energy, man, y'all, y'all, y'all don't, don't come in here with that, with that, that colonizer stuff. Hold on, now, now that you mention that, hold on, hold on. Hold. Black skin has naturally excellent protection from the sun. White skin needs the extra help of a sunscreen like UV. <laughs> Better to be sent than sorry! <laughs> They wildin' out, man. <laughs> they wildin' out. Like I said, I don't, man, I, I don't, man, it is what it is, man. Don't tell me nothing about no sunburn. I don't know nothing about no sunburn. Please. You say they banned that one in South Africa? <laughs> they the one created it. They created it. But anyway, y'all. Yeah, I just say, uh, you know, like I said, I don't want to get too, too off topic, but, um, you know, just think, like I say, think about that. You know what we're saying, ladies and gentlemen, just think about it a little bit. And, uh, you say black people can get some sunburn. What are they biracial? Cause I, cause I'm not, I, look, I, people, my color don't burn. Let's go. Let's go there. How about that? I ain't seen one dark skinned black person burn. Man, I've seen stories where, where they burn, their eyes burn. Like, I'm cool with my brown eyes. I'm good. You say you laugh at them? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, guys, like I said, we don't, we don't get too, go, to go too off topic, but, uh, I want to thank you guys once again. Please think about what we said tonight. Just, just think about it just a little bit. You know, I, I know some of you just have to participate and some of you feel like you have to be involved, but if you're not getting nothing out of the deal, what is the point? That's the only thing we are saying tonight. We will stay on top of um, this democratic party when they pull that stunt and everything. But I want to thank you guys for joining us tonight and see you guys definitely on the next live stream.